Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, kicking off the pick six on Wood Memorial Saturday at Aqueduct with graded stakes action. It's the grade three Bay Shore for three-year-olds going seven furlongs. It kicks off the pick six, but you're gonna wanna kick off your day by utilizing the first post bonus presented by DRF Bets. Bet $25 to win on any one horse in race number one at Aqueduct, Keeneland, and or Santa Anita. Get a $10 bonus, win or lose. Learn more at drf.com forward slash preps. Let's meet the field of three-year-olds getting set to go seven furlongs for a quarter of a million dollars in the Bay Shore. And Mike, the number one much better is your nine to five morning line favorite. Wasn't Mike Smith just way too aggressive with much better last time out in the grade three Gotham? It looked like after the first furlong, he could have had a nice spot sitting second off Nick's go, but he opted to open up a big lead, and he paid the price late. Yeah, I mean, not only did he open a big lead, he went really fast to do it. I mean, this horse was, he was flying early. Um, he did open a big lead in there. He couldn't hold it at the end, but in a lot of ways, you know, he might have run the best race uh, in, the, in the Gotham last time. Um, not only is the mile maybe a little too far for him, he just went way too fast early. If he can slow it down a little bit, there's not nearly as much speed in this race. Um, not that he has to get loose in here, but um, he looks like the best speed from the rail. And if he gets a softer trip, he's supposed to be tough to beat based on the last one. I'm not sure his other races make him um, the, the horse to beat in this race, but his last one might. But as you said, turning back should be key. He is a perfect two for two sprinting and Timeform US agrees with your assessment on the pace situation in that much better will have a much easier time of it on the lead, a blue bar situation, yeah. Timeform US that favors horses on or near the early lead. If much better gets loose, he's going to be tough to catch. The number three mind control, winner of the grade one hopeful at this seven furlong distance as a two year old. I like what trainer Greg Sacco is doing easily. Could have run this horse in the Wood Memorial based on his runner-up effort in the grade three Gotham, but this horse seems much better suited to one-turn racing. And I'm not sure what more John Velasquez could have done in the Gotham. He saw that there was a lot of speed. He saved every inch of ground. He came up the rail. It looked like he was a winner inside the 16th pole, and he was run down by Heikal in that race. The last move was the best move. That was a good race for mind control, but I wonder, is that the best he can do? I, I don't know, maybe it is. You, you think, um, I think you want to lean that way, maybe, if only because he got such a nice trip in that race, um, and it felt like a, a spot where he could really take advantage. It's no real disgrace that he got run down by Heiko, who's a nice horse. Um, but that's a race he could have won. I, I really feel like outside of the Breeders' Cup, which he has excuses for, listen, he's run well in all of his races, and he's a big contender in here. Dan, I don't know how they're going to bet the race, but there's a chance he's third choice in the wager. And if he is, you might want to take it. Do you think they'll revert to the pace setting tactics that they used to capture the hopeful, that they used to capture the Jerome, or at least be more aggressive coming out of the gate. I'm not sure they want to sit off a slow pace this time around. Do you think they'll try to creep closer to much better and try to sit second on this pace projector? I think that they almost have to. In a lot of ways, I feel like, you know, if if much better um, breaks cleanly in this race, my neutral can't be on the lead. Uh, much better is just faster than him. Um, but in a lot of ways, if much better is going, um, I think it could hurt mind control. Maybe that it could hurt anyone else, uh, more than anyone else in this race, though, because I think he does want to be close. Um, and if my, and if much better is going and he's going fast, uh, mind control could be in a tough spot here. The number four, Call Paul, already a multiple graded stakes winner going out for the Red Hot Chase and Service. You could argue he drew one of the better post positions in this race because if Mind Control does decide to keep much better busy, Call Paul has the stalking ability to sit in the outside in the clear. Last time out in the swale, he didn't break very well. He came with a four wide bid on the far turn and he kind of grinded it out. He was supposed to win that race as the favorite. I think he's a likable horse. This might be the toughest test to date, however. I mean, it's a tough spot for him. I'm I mean, um, obviously, when you look at him, all four of his career wins have come when he was, you know, heavily favored, and he won't be in this spot. Um, I think the positive way to look at him in this race is this: he's a two-time graded stakes winner. He did not run poorly in either the Champagne or the Nashua, which were pretty tough spots in their own right. And he's going to be the fourth choice in this race. He's not. It's not like he's totally over his head in here, um, and you'll get a price on him if you like him. I think it's going to be hard for him to win, Dan. I think he's going to have to improve to win, but it's not out of the question.
Longest shot on the board in this short field will be the five Mount Travers for Linda Rice. Both wins have come on wet tracks. Comes out of a very tough edition of the Miracle Wood Stakes, a race that has produced not only three next out winners, but the runner-up Gray Magician shipped halfway across the world to run second in the UAE Derby. The winner of that race always mining's a nice horse. He came back to score in the private terms with a 96 buyer speed figure. That being said, Mount Travers buyers pale in comparison to those of the main contenders. He might catch another wet track tomorrow, which wouldn't be a bad thing for him. It does sort of feel like he got hustled into a short field here, though. Let's take a look at our top selection for the Grade 3 Bay Shore Stakes. We're both going with Bill Mott's number two, Mucho. And this was the Mott two-year-old that we were really excited about last year. We really liked his debut effort. He came back with a sparkling maiden breaker at Saratoga. And while we expected a little bit more in the Grade 1 hope, fully ran just fine in that race. He came out of that race with an injury. It took Mott a lot of time to get him back to the races. And I'm very interested in your thoughts on his three-year-old return because it was a short field. Uh, he was supposed to win at odds of one to two, and it was more workmanlike than brilliant. Mott, after the race, almost immediately put the brakes on the classics. He said, we're just going to stay at shorter distances for now. Do you think Mott thinks he's not that good, or do you think he thinks he's distance challenged? Yeah, maybe he's just being realistic. I, I don't know. We'll see. I, I, it, much like mind control, I just think his connections made a smart decision not to try and go longer with him right now. We'll see what happens down the line. And as far as his um, three-year-old debut goes, I mean, I thought he ran fine. I wasn't blown away by it, but I felt like when all was said and done, it was just a really good place for him to start. He got hopefully what he needed out of it, and he could take a step forward in the base. So this is a pretty tough race, Dan. All of the one, two, and three, I think, I think they're pretty tough to separate in here. I went with Mucho because I think he can take a step forward um, off of that return race, and I really liked what he did as a two-year-old. Yeah, and I thought Mucho's return race, I wouldn't be surprised if he was a little bit short. He broke a half-length slow from the rail, a little bit eager in behind horses before getting into the clear. I expect him to be much tighter this time around. You like Mucho, I like Mucho. I'm going 2-3-1-4 in the Grade 3 Bay Shore. We're kicking off the pick six. And remember, the first post bonus presented by DRF Bets. Bet $25 to win on one horse in race number one at Aqueduct, Keeneland, and or Santa Anita. Get a $10 bonus. Win or lose, DRF bets as easy as ready, set, bet. Approximate post time for the Bay Shore, 338. Best of luck.